gonna be so close. This is very tight. We're going wheel to wheel. I'm going for it. Through goes Hamilton. It's not over yet. Max Verstappen. Champion of the world. Hello, everybody, and welcome to the qualifying notebook, the first of three notebooks from the title deciding, well, we think it's going to be title deciding, Qatar Grand Prix. We've got several races left in 2023, but we're pretty sure this is the last day. Happy Friday evening, by the way, if you're all, any of you watching. As you can see by the sign over there, it's 5 past 10 p.m. here. It's 5 past 8 in the UK. Uh, oh, late, uh, early 100 o'clock uh, in Australia and New Zealand, wherever you're watching us. So I hope you're, the beginning of your weekend has gone well. But today is the last day, we think, where Max Verstappen will only be a two-time world champion because tomorrow we have a sprint race. We have sprint qualifying in the morning uh, and then we have a sprint race in the afternoon. And all he needs to do is to score three points and then he will become, as the titles just said, as Crofty just said in our titles, Max Verstappen, champion of the world for the third time. Now, you might wonder why I'm outside the control tower and the race control. I'll tell you that in a second. But first of all, just admire the architecture, and this has all been rebuilt. So when we came here uh, for the first time a couple of years ago, it was essentially the MotoGP track that it had been since 2004 when it was built. It was all very, you know, sort of uh, humble, humble buildings. But now they've they knocked it all down and they've built it up again. So we have the three-story race control tower, which is done with this sort of lattice work in the in Arabian style, and the outside sort of shielding the offices from the sun, and it's quite a big sun. And then when you turn this way, Look at that. That is an oasis, isn't it? Well, it's an oasis where those trees are dying. They need a bit of water. But um, uh, it, looks, it looks wonderful. It looks marvelous. It looks very, very nice. Um, and not a surprise, I mean, when you consider the uh, sporting infrastructure, and we do go past the LaSalle circuit with its gold exterior, where they held the World Cup final last year, uh, of course, where Argentina were victorious. And, um, you know, they clearly do. Money is no object. Uh, or little object, um, sporting locations and facilities extremely well here in Qatar. So uh, if you're watching on the TV, you might have seen a lot of burgundy around because of the, uh, the event sponsor, Qatar Airways. So I'm afraid to say that we have no more ooray do. So um, it was a disappointment to me, and I hope uh, Notebook viewers from uh, a long time ago will be as disappointed as I do. I mean, still the local mobile network, provider, it's, all, it's on my phone, but Uridu is no, 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 no redo, no redo. Anyway, sorry, Uridu, but you're not a title sponsor anymore because that's why you're seeing a lot of burgundy. There'll be burgundy on the runoff area, there'll be burgundy on the, uh, on the advertising, there'll be burgundy on the TV graphics, there's burgundy everywhere. Not only because it's the sponsor's color, because it's the nation's color as well. That's the point. It is Qatar's color, uh, which is uh, the whole burgundy vibe that's going on around here. Now, the other reason why I'm standing outside race control is because we have the um, uh, little bit of handbags being investigated between Max Verstappen and Carlos Sainz. They have just gone in uh, to see the stewards. I'm not really minded, if you are, not to, to sort of hang around outside and, and, um, and see them come out. I'm not going to interview them when they come out. I might ask about Max Verstappen whether he, how, how he's going to spend his last night being a two-time world champion as opposed to a three-time world champion. But uh, I'm not sure anything is going to really come from it. And it's not as if it's the kind of thing that's going to decide uh, a championship. So let's not hang around. Instead, I'll give you a, uh, a, a, a view of, of, of what's for dinner. And it's from some, some fried rice and some chicken, which looks very nice. Don't know who that's being delivered to. Maybe the stewards, if it's really going badly for them. Uh, and in here is... Uh, uh, the media center. So um, I think this is some sort of uh, media cafe. It all seems to be very nice, sort of outside area. Wow, the reporters get younger and younger all the time, don't they, uh, Lee? Um, so um, yeah, it's a, a sort of media cafe. And I think there is somewhere, somebody tells me, so, oh, it's all oh, the air conditioning. Ah, oh, power of bliss, bliss. Someone tells me, we're not gonna go in, um, that there is a media fun and games room. Is that right? There's a media fun and games room somewhere. Oh, wow, great. 
this. Great. What's the, what are the fun and games in the media, fun and games room? Uh, there are, there's table tennis, there's Great. table football, there's Great. driving simulators, Great. there's refreshments, cold and hot. Great. So yeah, everything really. So you work for the LaSalle circuit, according yeah. to your shirt. Well, thank you for putting it on and thank you and congratulations on this wonderful looking uh, uh, facility. It looks delightful and marvelous. I'm so glad that you're enjoying it and yeah. um, it's lovely to welcome you here. So thank you. Enjoy thank the you rest of the weekend. I will, I will. It looks, it looks amazing. I mean, in the nighttime, it's sort of Japanese expert level of lighting going on. I, I, I think it's, you know, they've, they've aced the lighting. In the daytime, you could forgive them for thinking it looks a bit like Westfield in Stratford. But actually, in the nighttime, it just because the colour of the stone, not because it, it, it looks any like like Westfield. But um, it does actually, at nighttime, come alive, which is just as well because we have a night race here. So we're done with the uh, with the only uh, daytime um, practice session. We do have a daytime qualifying session uh, tomorrow for qualifying. But uh, yeah, that's what's uh, that's what's been going on. Um, it's a good circuit to come and visit from the UK, obviously, with the. Uh, uh, the, well, there's a huge capacity of, of, of plane seats uh, after the World Cup, which have more or less stayed as they were before. I mean, not as many as the World Cup, but obviously, but there are lots of, you know, there are several A380s every day going between London and Doha direct. So if you can get a good deal and come over here, uh, as long as you're not eating and drinking in any of the more expensive hotels uh, and restaurants, then it is a very cost-effective way uh, to come and see a Grand Prix. And you can be delightfully uh, entertained and uh, but, uh, do a bit of um, tanning uh, as well, if you like. Right, should we do, is there anything else on, uh, on what's going on in the facility? No, championship weekend, no, uh, let's get some lights. Yeah, okay, so Max Verstappen uh, first, and he saved the best till Q3. Um, and it was a 23-7 on his first attempt. Boom, I've written in my notebook. And then he pretty much did the proverbial, let's go back into the garage, light up a cigarillo or a cigar. I don't encourage anything like that, but you know what I mean. And uh, then park the car, put your feet up, and say to everybody else, beat that if you can, which of course they couldn't. And he didn't need to complete his, fast, his final lap, so he didn't and that time stayed. Uh, in the end, he wasn't threatened from behind from Lando Norris because Lando had, and Oscar, had their times deleted. So uh, yeah, that time stood and it's uh, P1. So um, it, it, with a half a second gap to George Russell, who is P2, and Mercedes were never gonna close that down, uh, no matter how well they're going here this weekend so far. As for Sergio Perez, it started badly and it got worse. Um, he had a deleted lap time and um, then he was out in P3, struggled with the car, uh, out in Q2, P13, and on a, on a happy weekend where he's been celebrating, uh, him and Carol, uh, his, uh, his wife, have been celebrating the arrival of baby number four to the uh, Perez uh, family, to the Sergio Perez family. It's um, unfortunate that uh, he comes here and, uh, yeah, it uh, isn't able, well, it's just struggling with a car and only P13. Hopefully, Helmut Marco won't be making any off-color jokes about how it's uh, being a new dad and uh, feeding the baby that's maybe affected his performance uh, this weekend because clearly it doesn't. But anyway, a nice thing to happen for Sergio, child number four, but uh, not a great weekend so far. It can only get better from here, Checo, but out in Q3, uh, Q2, only P13. Also out in Q2 was uh, Carlos Sainz. Now, at Ferrari, the general problem has been getting the tyres up to temperature, especially in the first sector. That affected Sainz. It affected Leclerc today as well. But Sainz was worse affected because it was a messy session. He went out early, tried to get the heat out in the outlap, didn't work, then didn't get a lap in. Uh, he tangled with Max Verstappen, for which he's being investigated the stewards, or rather interviewed by the stewards at the moment. Then he wasn't quick enough and he was out. So uh, that was means that Sir Carlos is only P12 for the Qatar Grand Prix here on Sunday. Not the sprint, of course, remember, for the Grand Prix on Sunday. But better for Charles Leclerc, P5, so not as quick as the Mercedes, because, of course, because what I, uh, the reason I said couldn't get the tyre temperature in the first sector. Um, he, uh, he got uh, a decent through into Q3, complained slightly about the uh, not being able to keep to the minimum times, said can't do when you go out and do something different to everybody else. And, uh, but anyway, got a lap done, which was good enough for P5. Now, what has 
Ma uh, Fred Vasseur been saying um, on, uh, on the point of the new teams? Well, he's been saying that Ferrari are generally um, cautious. Uh, they're generally not in favor of just opening it up uh, for any new team that wants to come along, and they feel that any new team has to add value to the championship. That's pretty much what you're hearing from lots of other teams. So some of the teams down the end of the grid in the pit lane, like Williams, as you would have heard from James Bowles, if you're watching our program, are citing the historic, recent historic financial difficulties that many teams have had. And if you remember back to the COVID times of 2019, 2020, 2021, in that time of COVID, plenty of, time of teams needed saving because they were close to going out of business. So it's only recently ignoring the valuations of 500, 600, 700, 900 million pound valuations on the teams themselves, it's only recently that they have been financially secure. And what James Vowles and other people are saying further down the grid is that they don't want to imperil that by bringing another team in and having incremental reductions in the prize money for the existing teams that have weathered the storm over the last few years only to come in and have that storm maybe come and rain on them once again. So that is the point. Uh, it's a difficult one because, you know, while that's a sound economic and, and you know, managerial point, it's not really very sort of fan friendly and, and, and competition friendly. Formula One is a sport. Uh, and a business, it's a sport between, what was it? Was it Frank Williams? So Frank Williams, he said that Formula One is a sport between two and four on a Sunday afternoon, and then the rest of the time it's a business. Whoever said that was right. Um, but if it's a sport, then you have to let some new people in now and again, you know, to, 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 to keep it all fresh. And all the drivers are very much in favor of getting some uh, new blood, new teams into uh, the sport. But uh, yeah, we'll see uh, what happens on that. But various people have had things to say about that. Um, Frederick Vasseur was uh, talking about uh, Red Bull, congratulating Red Bull being on the, in the Constructors' Championship. He was saying it's very hard to say whether the uh, accepted breach agreement for last year's uh, uh, exceeding of the cost cap for Red Bull had any effect on their car. Obviously, they wrapped up the Constructors' Championship uh, last week in Japan. But he said without getting into the details of it, it's very difficult to say. But uh, he trusts in the FIA policing the, the cost cap going forward, which they have done because everybody is within it uh, this year. We'll see what happens uh, next year as well. Um, right, uh, Mercedes, you're here already, Lee. So uh, let's do... Oh, no, you've got the drivers coming back from the stewards. Uh, do they look friendly? They look like they've sorted their differences out. Mm, sort of. Um, anyway, uh, Mercedes, I'll carry on uh, saying, uh, updating you on that. Bye, he says. Bye. Bye, Carlos. Of course, teammates, ex-teammates uh, at uh, Toro Rosso. So hopefully they didn't um, dob each other in too much. Uh, Mercedes, Lewis Hamilton third, and George Russell second. So good day for Mercedes. And I'm just wondering whether whoever drives the... Uh, uh, whoever set the car up on the Mercedes simulator, <coughs> Anthony Davidson, did an absolutely brilliant job uh, because they didn't have time to change the car very much. A few tweaks here and there, Mercedes said. But from the setup they arrived here in Doha with on the car, they didn't change it. And by not changing it, they found that as the track cleaned up, it came to the cars and the drivers. George Russell said the car is well balanced and Lewis Hamilton made a mistake, so he's a little bit frustrated with himself, but uh, that meant that it's George P2 and Lewis P3 after the McLaren laps got deleted. And I'm saying, and I don't know whether I should say this too loudly, that this is a vital, a crucial, really important, and I made that point clear enough, weekend for George Russell. So out with the unfortunate incident in Singapore, only P7, I think it was, in Japan, and so he really needs, at a track where it looks like the car is okay, a strong weekend. I would go so far as to say this is a must podium for George Russell this weekend to get his, uh, well, to get his head straight again and to get back into it. Um, but yeah, Lewis Hamilton, um, a little slide on the last attempt and lost a couple of tenths to Russell. That meant that he was B3, uh, but uh, we'll see what happens. Toto update for you. Uh, if you look hard enough, um, you can keep looking because he's not here. So we understand that he's um, now hurt his knee in trying to uh, rec compensate for uh, hobbling on his crutches following his knee operation, so, uh, his, his ankle operation. Ankle operation? Knee operation. Basically, is Toto all right? Yes, he is. But he's still recovering, so he's not here. Okay, right, without getting into details of knees and ankles and everything all right, 
We were expecting Toto to be here this weekend. He's not, so it's still the triple-headed uh, replacement, Jerome Damrosio, Bradley Lord, and Andrew Shovlin, who are standing in for Toto Wolf. So the three-headed knight from Monty Python's Holy Grail continues to be in charge of Mercedes uh, this weekend. And the three-headed knight is doing quite well because they are having, so far, a good weekend. Interesting, I thought, James Allison saying about Lewis Hamilton going for P2 in the championship. I think, in a sense, Mercedes want to do that just so that Red Bull can't have it, which is competitive and fair enough, I guess. But it's important to Lewis, and I uh, thought it was a nice way of amusing, and James Allison always is, saying on our program earlier today, if Sergio continues to have uh, some off weekends, that will uh, be uh, suit us very nicely. That will be lovely for us. And uh, with any luck, he said, that was the phrase, I wrote it down. With any luck, Sergio will continue to have some bad weekends. And that means that Lewis will be able to nick or steal back or, yeah, nick uh, P2 in the Drivers' Championship and prevent Red Bull from having a first and second in the Drivers' Championship, something that Red Bull Racing have never had in their uh, many years of uh, uh, success in with the Vettel years and now in the Verstappen years. Right, let's take a little break because we've done uh, 16 minutes or so. Um, and uh, I'll tell you uh, what happened on Alpine's uh, qualifying in a minute while you have a look. Very nice arty shot of Pierre Gasly's crash helmet. More notebook in a bit. Hiya, welcome back to the qualifying notebook. First of three notebooks, it's going to be a qualifying notebook today, sprint notebook tomorrow, sprint race notebook, and a race notebook on Sunday from the 2023 Qatar Grand Prix. Now, do you remember there used to be a swimming pool in the old Qatar Grand Prix, but this is where it is now, I suppose. So uh, uh, that's uh, what's left uh, of the pool. Right, let's get on with Alpine, uh, shall we? And um, it's a sort of typical Alpine performance today. Esteban Ocon, eighth. Pierre Gasly, seventh. Where are you, Lee? Oh, have I got, oh no. Are you gonna embarrass me here? It's not so bad. That's... Anyway, a typical Alpine performance uh, today where Esteban Ocon uh, and Pierre Gasly are about as fast as the, uh, as the car would go today, behind Alonso and McLarens and Mercedes and Ferrari. Uh, Gasly was last out in qualifying, which was a nice idea and good, uh, good team management because the track was only gonna get faster uh, as the qualifying session went on. But he, and he was two tenths quicker, Gasly was at two tenths quicker than Esteban Ocon, which was okay, but no more than eighth and seventh uh, on the grid. Now the post-Japan tension still seems to be there. I thought when it had been explained to Pierre Gasly what was going on, they weren't trying uh, to stitch him up, that it was all going to be all right um, with Pierre Gasly and Esteban Ocon. But then Pierre, no one seemed to be telling Pierre Gasly that. And when he went into the press conference, would only be tight-lipped, I think it's fair to say, uh, about the whole uh, incident. But anyway, I must pay tribute to uh, the piloting skills, the completely unknown piloting skills of Esteban Ocon. And it was only until after we uh, managed to get him into the Qatar Airways uh, 787 Dreamliner Simulator, and thank you to Qatar Airways for letting us basically nick some time in there, in there flight simulator for Esteban Ocon that we found out that Esteban Ocon has essentially been cheating and has been playing Microsoft Flight Simulator for pretty much his whole uh, uh, childhood and, and, and near adult life. It's not cheating, but it turns out Ocon is a, is a flight simmer. I know, who knew? And so when it came to actually landing a Boeing 787, he was actually totally competent and flying with a flight director and everything. He just, he was really good. Shouldn't be surprised, you know, hand-eye coordination. You know, he's pretty good at everything else, Esteban Ocon. But uh, yeah, he turned out really well. So um, yeah, it's, it's, uh, surprisingly good. So well done, uh, Esteban Ocon. If you're ever in a plane, things have gone really badly, and they say, and you're on, with Esteban Ocon, they say, is there anybody in the, you know, on the plane who can, uh, who can land one of these things? Then, Este you know, if you're with Esteban, then you're in good hands, all right? Good. Someone's dropped their sunglasses here. They'll be disappointed. What should we do? Should we do it like when a kid loses their gloves, Lee, and just sort of leave it on the, the latest? Uh, these aren't yours, are they, Mark? No, they're not yours. Someone's left these on the ground. Shall I leave them there like a sort of kid's hat or something? They're, they're sort of, they look like Christian Horners, actually. They're aviators. They look like the kinds Christian wears. They're a bit, they're a bit, they're a bit cheaper, to be honest. Maybe he gets his free. You all right? Um, good. Uh, so McLaren today, uh, Landon Norris 10th, Oscar Piastri 6th, and the car is quick, but half a metre. That's what I've written here. The car is quick, but half a metre. When the car is quick, 
Just take half a meter, guys. Take half a meter. Take half a meter. Just take half a meter and you'll be all right. Take half a meter. <laughs> you'll only do it once. I know you'll only do it once. But, you know, if, the, I mean, if, you don't have to say if, if they'd taken half a meter of margin, both of them, these naughty boys, then they wouldn't be sixth and 10th. They'd be on the front row and they'd probably be third as well. But anyway, listen, that's the way it goes. At least it's not uh, for the, Gr oh, no, hang on. It is for the Grand Prix. Uh, Lando got his first attempt deleted in Q1, then got another one deleted in Q3, which was a 24-0, which would have put him uh, P2, which is very costly. Then he got his last uh, attempt deleted as well. Then Oscar got promoted to P3 and got his time deleted uh, for the same track limits infringement. So half a meter is what they need. But uh, oh, well, the other question I was wanting to know was what Christian Horner, him of the aviator sunglasses, said to Lando Norris on the Japan podium. Uh, he covered his mouth so that they couldn't lip read it. And what did he say? Did he say, I want to, I want to know, you'll be, you could get used to this up here with us if you join us into the future. But Alex Albon kind of confirmed that there is this the paddock well, it's not really a paddock secret, paddock open, open secret, that Red Bull are focusing on Lando Norris as Sergio Perez's eventual replacement, whether it be in 2024 or 2025, probably 2025. But I think we all knew that anyway, did we not? But it was interesting that Alex Albon sort of said, you know, I think this is public, but uh, yeah, Red Bull want Lando uh, to replace Checo, not Daniel Ricciardo, not... Uh, Liam Lawson, so uh, into the future. Uh, right, anything else on uh, McLaren? No, we've got uh, only got a few minutes left, so let's rock it through it. Alfa Romeo Sauber, Valtteri Bottas ninth, Zhou Guangyu P20, and Valtteri Bottas was into Q2, then was given a Q3 spot due to Sergio Perez's deleted lap, was slowest of the top 10, but got promoted to P9. Zhou Guangyu, very disappointed, didn't get a lap in because he was done by traffic. We think it was Logan Sargent, and uh, that meant that he was only 20th, but the car is quicker than 20th, and that is not representative for Zhou Guang Yu, even though they're still a bit concerned and confused about whether their upgrades are working or not. Uh, Aston Martin, P4 for Fernando Alonso for Sunday's Grand Prix is a result. There's no putting it any other way. He hauled the car into Q3, did Fernando Alonso. Great lap, uh, were executed well. It was P5, then he was told it was P4 with a McLaren's demotion for track limits. Six hundredths of a second behind Lewis Hamilton, so it might have been even more for Fernando. This is a strong weekend for Alonso on the podium the last time we came here. And I think that he has his idea of getting much more than that. We will see Lance Stroll very annoyed out in Q1 again. Uh, let's see if the team can help him. Greg Stewart from FOM, who did the interview, which will now be probably famous uh, with Lance Stroll, where Greg said, how do you feel? Uh, which Lance said a swear word, and then the rest of it. But um, yeah, you can only feel for Lance Stroll because it's not going uh, his way at the moment. Right, Haas F1, Kevin Magnussen uh, P19, Nico Hülkenberg 15th, and about as much as the grip and the car would allow today, uh, Hulk actually had a lap deleted that would have put him P14, but P15 it is instead. Uh, Kevin Magnussen has struggled all day. Bear in mind he hasn't raced here before. So, oh, that's an interesting discussion. Pierre Vachet from Red Bull and Mike Crack from... Uh, uh, Aston Martin, they wouldn't be tapping up, but Aston Martin wouldn't be tapping up a, a key Red Bull person in open view of us and our cameras in the middle of a Qatar paddock, would they? Would they? No, they wouldn't. They must be old friends or discussing something. What's that all about? Uh, uh, right, anyway, uh, so yeah, so uh, uh, Kevin Magnussen, difficult to learn this track. He struggled all day and uh, he was almost a second out of getting out of Q1, actually, so pretty disappointed. Finally, Alpha Tauri, Liam Lawson, P18, Yuki Sonoda, P11. Good effort for Yuki Sonoda, head of Science and Perez, but they both obviously had their issues. And uh, yeah, good, uh, not bad, uh, proving that the upgrades work. And Liam has driven be before here for Alpine in a test, but never raced here in a current Formula One car. There is Kevin Magnussen, disappointed uh, for him. Bad luck, Kev. Um, but uh, yeah, Liam Lawson struggled here today and didn't manage to get out of Q1. So uh, Ricardo, Daniel Ricardo, is almost definitely gonna return in Austin. Uh, the chief there, uh, Alpha Tauri here, Peter Bayer, says that if they pushed it, he could have driven here this weekend, but he wasn't 100% fit, but he thinks he will be, Danny Rick will be 100% fit in Austin in a couple of weeks time. And I still want him, 
uh, Michael, Daniel's old uh, trainer, to come in on Horsey McHorseface. Can you please ask Daniel, because I don't have his number and you do, to come in on Austin on Horsey McHorseface again, like he did last year. The return to F1, Daniel just has to come in on Horsey McHorseface back in. Did you see his advert for Western Australia, by the way? Uh, actually, no, I didn't. Oops. It lasts about 12 minutes. I know, I never knew there was so much of Western Australia to love, but anyway. No, Perth's beautiful. It is. No, yeah. I know, I know, I've been there. Margaret River, wine region. Okay, cool, awesome. Good, I know, yeah. You're not from WA, I take it. Oh, you are? Yeah. Oh, right. I'm a Perth boy. Okay, right. Come on, there you know. It should be half an hour, the Danny Ricks advert for Western Australia. Anyway, have a look at it if you haven't seen it. Uh, it's quite good. Uh, and Williams, Alex Albon, 14th. Logan Sargent, 16th. The car hasn't felt great all weekend. Logan Sargent just about out in Q1, but by a 10th uh, by Alex Albon actually put out. And uh, then he left... Uh, some pace on the table, he said, in the high speed. Alex Albon did what he could, got the car into Q2, but couldn't progress past 14th. Plenty to tell you uh, from Williams about their feelings about an 11th team and about some details they found from a pretty otherwise disastrous weekend in Japan from a very slow pit stop that even though it didn't affect their performance in Japan, they're glad they found, and it's going to help them for the rest of the weekend. But I will tell you that and more in the sprint race notebook after the sprint race tomorrow, Saturday. So from the time being, from qualifying Friday here in Qatar, have a great Friday night, whatever you're doing. Have a great Saturday. Join us for sprint qualifying. Uh, there is Alex Albon. Bye, Alex and Logan. Oh, he's not looking at me. Um, join us for sprint qualifying, uh, sprint qualifying of Saturday morning and the sprint race uh, on Saturday afternoon. Uh, but from now, thanks for watching and see you on Saturday. Bye-bye. Sky Sports F1. Feel it all.